Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. Have you ever really wanted to buy something, but it cost too much money so you couldn't afford it? Well, if you're smart or if you watch this video, it doesn't have to be that way. The question I get asked more than anything is I have this much money, what can I do with it? And the reason that question is so difficult is because every person is working with a different amount of money. Some people are ready to drop $5,000 on a PC and some people have asked me to build them one for $20 and some weird stuff. So no matter how much money you have, this video will show you how to get the most value out of your budget, including $20. That's not clickbait, I've done it. I'll show you how to get a computer with only $20. First of all, if you wanna ask more questions, find anything confusing, or need more specific information about anything in this video, come to my Twitch live streams. Most of the time I'm there to entertain, but I also spend a lot of time answering questions so that people don't make a bad purchase. And it's not just me. We have a lot of smart people there too, so be sure to join the Discord server, which is linked below, and follow me on Twitch so that you know when I go live. That is the best way that I can help you. Okay, so we have a few notes to go over before we get into these lists. Number one, every list on this video will be good performance wise for at least two to three years and will only include brand new parts. As more demanding games come out, you will need to adjust your settings, but you won't need to sell your PC and buy a new one. Number two, you might be thinking, Black Friday's right around the corner. Why don't I just wait and buy a cheaper pre-built PC? Just know any list in this video will be a better deal than anything you can find during Black Friday on pre-built PCs. Number three, not everything on these lists will be 100% concrete. If you know enough about computer parts, you can be slightly flexible in changing up what I recommend. However, if you know nothing and just wanna copy exactly what is in this video, you will still have a great PC for the budget. Number four, there is also some important information that you need to know on why I chose the parts in the way that I did, just in case any of you want to make a counter argument. You'll notice that every list in this video has an SSD. I am not going to give you a list to build a slower computer. While there are some hard drives out there that can operate slightly faster than some of the slower HDDs that some of us might be used to or have grown up with, I refuse to think that in 2019 you cannot have a faster computer on a budget. Concerning the RAM, every list in this video will be running two sticks for dual channel. Some of you might want to point out that it is actually cheaper to buy one stick of RAM right now and then upgrade to a second one down the line in the future. The reason I'm not going to let you do that because if you look on the internet, you will see multiple resources pointing out that running one stick of RAM will dramatically decrease the performance of your computer. If you want to use gaming as an example, you can check out Jay's Two Cents video on how memory allocation affects performance and you will notice there's quite a big dip in FPS if you run it that way. I promise you the five to $10 you will save on that one stick of RAM is not worth the performance drop. Concerning power supply options, you will notice I used PCPartPicker.com and in all of those lists, I have what is the cheapest power supply that will support a graphics card as well as a CPU. Do not buy that power supply. There are actually 10 to $20 cheaper options available on Amazon or on the B stock site for EVGA. I have those linked in the description. So if you want to buy those, which you should, it's better value, 
just look below. Just note that Amazon is a little bit more pricey. So if you really want to get the best value, buy a B stock EVGA power supply. You should be able to get a 600 watt one at all times for around $30. Number five. Now you might not know what you want to do with this PC. You just know that you want a nicer one. If you are a gamer, the games you plan on playing should play a part in your decision-making process for what list you're gonna go with if you are money conscious. For example, if you're someone who only plays Doom, which is heavily optimized by Vulkan API, you can get an incredibly trash cheap PC and still get a lot of frames per second. If you plan on playing Red Dead Redemption 2, which we've come to find out is really poorly optimized, you're gonna need something a little bit more expensive. And if you are a streamer and you plan on becoming the next Shroud or Ninja, you will probably need something even nicer than that. And lastly, if any of you are looking to hit a specific FPS number in any games that you might wanna be playing, make sure you do a benchmark search for the graphics card in these lists to make sure that list will meet your requirements. Those are all the important things to know. So now let's get into the lists. First off, we have the no budget gaming PC. And I'll be honest, this is half a joke. But if you are someone who enjoys throwing money at things without a care in the world, or if you need to compensate for something, then this is the PC for you. The entire thing is gonna cost you just under $8,000. In this completely unnecessary powerhouse, you are going to have a 32 core, 64 thread processor, 128 gigabytes of RAM, and two RTX 2080 Ti's. If you don't understand anything I just said, just know this is the Bugatti Veyron of PCs. Why would you get this? You're either buying the head editor of your professional video editing company a new toy, or you're incredibly insecure. So you've got a nice chunk of cash and you're looking for something serious that can do it all. This is a great system and it is very comparable to what I have for myself. With this, you'll be getting the Ryzen 9 3900X, which is a 12 core, 24 thread processor, which can handle it all. From editing to rendering to streaming to gaming, etc., this thing can do it with ease. The graphics card is a major part of this budget, which is an RTX 2080 Ti. It's one of the nicest consumer graphics cards you can have right now and it can handle any game at any settings at any resolution. Whatever you want to throw at it, it can handle it. This system has 32 gigabytes of RAM, which can easily handle your millions of Chrome tabs, which all definitely have safer work videos on them. If you're an editor or content creator, this is really nice to have because you don't need to open and close different programs to allocate more RAM for one program over the other. With this list, you're basically getting the same exact PC from the list before. The only difference is the graphics card. Instead of an RTX 2080 Ti, you will be getting an RTX 2080, which most of you will never notice the difference performance-wise. The only circumstance in which someone will notice the performance dip is if you are a gamer who likes to play games at 4K. And to be honest, I don't understand those people. Why are you so extra? Okay, so we've dropped another $500. What's the difference? Well, to the average gamer, streamer, or even medium to high-end content creator, there really isn't one. What I mean by that is the two major changes to this list are the CPU and RAM. The processor for this list is a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an eight core, 16 thread processor. Instead of a 12 core, 24 thread beast, you are now getting an eight core, 16 thread, slightly less impressive beast. For those of you that don't know PC parts, just know that your average consumer has a processor from two to six cores. If you are ignorantly trying to get a top tier PC and think that you need more, please understand that this processor is still very top tier. For the RAM, we dropped the capacity to 16 gigabytes to accommodate this new budget. This is still enough to game and stream, but definitely not enough to have multiple content creation programs open at the same time. To explain this build more simply, I personally could get by by using this PC. I stream and edit for a living. My livelihood depends on a good PC. I could do what I do now on this PC, even though it would be a downgrade for me. So if you're just casually gaming and streaming and still want an amazing experience, this will deliver that as well. Okay, so this list is similar to the previous. The only difference is the graphics card. Instead of an RTX 2080, we are going to be going with an RTX 2060 Super, which if you wanted could be replaced by an RX 5700 XT if you wanted to save yourself even more money and you don't particularly care about the ray tracing technology that comes with RTX cards. If you don't know what ray tracing is, just Google it. Basically what it does is it makes the games that you play a little bit more immersive if the game supports it. In my opinion, it's definitely not necessary, but it is nice to have. The only regular consumer downgrade with this card is that you will no longer be able to game as well at higher resolutions. I'm talking to the people who like playing at 1440p or 4K. And if you are someone who likes to stream off of their graphics card specifically, you will need to drop your settings just a bit when you are playing seriously demanding games. 
Okay, so we dropped another $500. You're probably thinking we're gonna start noticing some serious performance loss. To that I say, yes, but also no. In this list, the major differences are the CPU and graphics card. Instead of a Ryzen 7 3700X, we're gonna be going with a Ryzen 7 2700X, which I mentioned earlier. Remember, it is only 10% worse. But you should be aware of this. Price-wise, the 2700X is actually 30% cheaper than the 3700X. So if you're just going off value alone, the 2700X is actually a better buy. For the graphics card, there is definitely a decent downgrade here because this list utilizes the GTX 1660, which is about 30% worse on average in comparison to the RTX 2060 Super. Now you might be thinking 30% is pretty absurd. That's a huge dip. However, this list is $500 cheaper than the last one for what is still a pretty high-end gaming PC. Now you might be thinking 30% is pretty absurd. That's kind of a big number. However, keep in mind that this list is $500 cheaper than the last one for what is still a top tier PC. If you're a gamer who also likes to stream, you're definitely gonna want to use your CPU when streaming off of this specific PC so that your graphics card can focus on allocating all of its resources to the game. If you're comparing it to the last list, you will still have nice stream quality because of how powerful the 2700X is. And honestly, you will still have a really nice gaming experience as well. Feel free to look up the benchmarks of the GTX 1660. It may not be the most amazing card, but if you're playing games at 1080p, you can still run just about anything on high settings. Okay, so we have definitely now entered the lower budget end of PC building. These lists going forward will be the lists that definitely compete and beat out any Black Friday pre-built PC that you're gonna find. Like I said before, anything in this video is going to do that, but these ones specifically will give you much better value than anything even comparably priced. I say that because there are actually some decently priced pre-built PCs coming from CyberPower PC during Black Friday. If you don't wanna build your PC and you want more information on that, Follow me on Twitter. I am posting a Black Friday guide for all things tech related, including those pre-built PCs. So make sure to check it out. Anyways, this list is my favorite out of all of them. This is the one that I use most often when I'm trying to surprise someone with a new PC or get them into gaming, and I really want them to have a great experience. Here you are getting a Ryzen 5 2600, which is a six core 12 thread processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an RX 580 eight gigabyte graphics card. Now I know I said earlier that the average consumer processor can be anywhere from two to six cores, but don't think for a second that this processor is underwhelming in any way. This is actually one of the last processors I would recommend if you were looking to start streaming seriously, but are on a budget. The quality this thing is capable of is actually just good enough to make you look professional, can handle any game you're gonna wanna play, and can also handle medium levels of content creation. As for the graphics card, the RX 580 eight gigabyte variant is actually my favorite budget graphics card. You can run a great stream off this thing as well as play most games on high settings at 1080p. For esports titles or shooters that require high FPS, you can also drop the settings slightly in game to reach that 144 sweet spot or maybe even 240 FPS. It depends on the game. Let me say this again. This is my favorite list out of all of them in this video. I cannot stress to you how much performance you are getting for how little you are spending on this PC. Now we're getting into the area where we're making sacrifices. I'll be honest with you. This PC is not very pretty. This is the only time I will point that out because the rest of the budgets going forward require you to get the cheapest case possible in order to stay under budget. So if you can find something cheaper than what I've linked below, feel free to change it. That said, what this PC lacks in looks, it makes up for in performance. This PC uses the Ryzen 5 1600, which is also a six core 12 thread processor. It's just slightly weaker in the previous generation of the Ryzen 5 2600. We also have to drop our RAM capacity to eight gigabytes, which makes multitasking on this PC a lot more difficult. What's crazy about this build is you are actually still able to stream as well as game. That's right, you can have a gaming and streaming processor for $400 using new parts. The processor is the only thing you are going to be able to stream off of because the graphics card is the GTX 1650. It's not so much that that graphics card is incapable of streaming, it's just a weaker variant of the 1650, so you're not gonna wanna use that for any encoding. That said, it's not that bad of a card. It can still play a lot of games pretty decently on 1080p. I would recommend keeping most of your games at medium settings. Content creation is definitely still possible on this PC. However, I would strongly advise against longer form 10 minute videos because that will start to burden your editing software. This is mostly due to the smaller RAM capacity. Overall, this is a solid system. If you're just gaming, this is an awesome option. And if you wanna do a little bit more than that, this PC is still capable. 
All right, so from this point onwards, you are getting a slightly improved gaming console. This system is for gaming. It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. If you're someone playing at 1080p, just running esports titles, you're gonna have a good time on this system. If you're someone who wants to load up more advanced titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 or the new Star Wars game, you're definitely gonna have to drop your settings to medium, maybe even lower to enjoy them at a reasonable frame rate. In this PC, we're using the Ryzen 3 1200, which is the weakest processor of the non-integrated graphics Ryzen series. It is a four core, four thread processor, which is fine for gaming and productivity, but not streaming and content creation. If you surf the web and play games, this is fine. The RAM and graphics card are actually the exact same from the previous list, so no changes there. The only time I would recommend buying this specific list is if you have $350 to spend now and plan on running into an extra $250 in the future to make a nice upgrade. Now that might sound like a total of $600 and you're thinking, ah, I should just wait till I have that much money. But remember, when you buy newer parts, you can sell your old ones to subsidize the cost. So at this budget, you can no longer afford a graphics card. This PC runs off what is called integrated graphics. That means the processor handles both the computing tasks as well as the graphics tasks. Now, if you don't know much about those, then you're probably wondering, what is the performance like on something like that? To be honest, it's not great. However, I actually recommend this list over the $350 list, and here's why. The processor on this list is the 2400G, which is a four core, eight thread processor. That's better than the Ryzen 3 1200. In the last list, a logical upgrade will cost you $250. That's because I assume you would want to upgrade the CPU as well as the graphics card. For this list, you would only need $150 to make a logical upgrade. The reason I say that is because you could in theory buy an RX 580 eight gigabyte graphics card and spend a total of $450 eventually on this PC. Once you buy this new graphics card, the 2400G only has to become a CPU and the RX 580 can handle all the GPU tasks. The best part is when you do make this upgrade, you don't even have to sell any of your old parts to help subsidize the cost. Aside from that, the 2400G alone is actually not that bad for gaming. That's if you are someone who just wants to run the games and doesn't care that much about graphics. You won't be able to run any seriously demanding games off the 2400G unless you consider dropping the resolution down to 720p and keeping games at low settings. If you're okay with doing that, you can actually still have a decent time. Just a quick note, for this specific list, there's actually a really good bundle deal that gets two of the parts you need to build this if you want to make it even cheaper, I think this gets down to $200, so make sure you take advantage of that. Anyway, so finally, we have the cheapest budget in this video. I made this because I figured for those of you that want a PC over a console, I need to make a list that is similarly priced to a console. This PC is running integrated graphics as well, and it utilizes the 2200G instead of the 2400G. In case it isn't apparent, yes, the 2200G is weaker than the 2400G. I only recommend this list for people who are looking to get into gaming right now, only have $250 that they want to spend and that's all they foresee themselves having in the near future. That said, an eventual $100 on a graphics card would actually be a very substantial upgrade to the system if you, you know, find $100 somewhere. 720p or 1080p at low settings is what you'll be looking at for almost all the games you play. Lighter esports titles like League of Legends or CSGO should run fine, but more demanding games like Rainbow Six Siege or PUBG will definitely struggle. Just to reiterate, this list is for people that do not have high standards when it comes to gaming on PC. The target audience for someone who might be okay with a list like this are 10 to 16 year olds who have never had a gaming experience on a computer before. At this budget, I personally would spend my money on used parts locally on OfferUp, Craigslist, or maybe even eBay and try to get a better deal. That does require knowledge of how to build a computer and knowing what parts are compatible. But like I said, it's up to you. Ah, and lastly, I said I'd cover this in the beginning of the video, the $20 PC. How do you build a PC for $20? Well, I've done it and I'll explain it to you now, let me ask you something. Right now, if you go to Facebook Marketplace, offer up Craigslist, try to find an ad of someone who's trying to buy older iPhones. I did this in the past, but basically this is how this hustle works. If you have 20 bucks, try to buy an iCloud locked 6S Plus. I guarantee you, you can find at least one desperate person in a month's worth of time selling it to you for $20. What you do is you take that phone and then you resell it for parts because there are people who have the skill set of utilizing those parts and using them to replace or fix other existing iPhones. I have a video I've been working on for about six to eight months now 
where I started with $20 and ended up with a thousand. And let me tell you, you can take that $20 and keep reflipping it until you have enough to build a PC that exists on any of these lists. Does it take a while? For me, it took two weeks. It's up to you if you're willing to put in that hustle. I'm just putting that option out there. If you really don't have the money, it is possible to work your way up. So I hope out of any of the budgets or any of the information I shared here, you're able to get the PC of your dreams for this holiday season. I hope it helps out. Just remember a few things. Come to the live streams if you have any questions about anything on this video or if you have a more specific question that wasn't addressed here. There is a huge Black Friday guide coming out that I will be posting on Twitter. And then finally, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it creative, entertaining, or informative in any way, shape, or form. And as always, have a great day.